Hey, what's up everyone? The Ninja Turtles Power Rangers crossover sequel comic is currently going on right now, and we've been doing breakdowns and reviews. We already did issue number one, and now it's time to review issue number two, which came out a little while back. Issue number one had some big reveals, so go check that out if you haven't yet. But let's discuss what issue two of this crossover was about in this video. I'm sure it had a lot going on. Spoiler warning for those who need it. We're gonna break down everything. So if you haven't read the book, make sure to get it and then come back, but let's waste no more time and dive on in. So issue number two starts off in Dimension X. We see the Technodrome. I believe this is the first time we've seen Dimension X in this TMNT Power Rangers crossover continuity. From what I understand, these turtles aren't a part of any other version of the turtles. They're just kind of their own thing. And we didn't get to see Dimension X in the first crossover. So we see what's going on inside. We have Baxter, Bebop, Rocksteady, Goldar, and what looks like Scorpina. And they're all bowing down to Rita, who is sitting on some type of a throne inside of the Technodrome. She is lecturing them on how they have had it easy in the past, but that now there will be no more mercy for failure. She asks Baxter about a task and if he's completed it, which it looks like he has. We come back to that a little bit later. Then she expresses her disappointment in the rest of the team for not bringing back any turtles or rangers from their recent encounter with them. Rocksteady begins to blame the new evil Casey Jones Power Ranger when suddenly Casey can be heard as he stands from afar saying, if you fought half as well as you make excuses, you might actually win a fight once in a while. Goldar and Rocksteady begin to get hostile with Casey here, but Rita breaks it up and tells Rocksteady to ready the troops and for Goldar to have Finster make more putties, that by tomorrow, Earth will be theirs. We next cut over to New York, and we see that the Turtles and the Rangers are in the Turtle Den discussing how bad guys from both the Rangers and the Turtle side are being abducted, similar to what we heard in issue one. We see Splinters here, by the way. Splinter is holding what appears to be a hologram of Zordon. Both Zordon and Splinter try to calm the team down, as they are worried for Casey. Mikey calls him Ranger X because of the giant X on his chest. This is when Jason, the Red Ranger, mentions that this is not the first time he does use the evil Ranger, referring to Tommy, Tommy begins to talk about how it happened to him, how he was brainwashed and turned evil in the past. Raph begins to question him on how he eventually broke free. Tommy tells him that Rita usually enchants an item close to the person. Raph says Casey's hockey stick, which if you remember, we did see him carrying a ranger-fied version of that hockey stick. Tommy says, if you can break it, it'll set him free. We jump back over to Ranger X, or Casey. Still on Dimension X, he is looking at some broken morphers with X's on them. Coincidentally, these morphers are the color of each one of the turtles. We'll see if that comes to play later. Then we see Krang, and this is the first time we see him in these crossovers as well. And he looks cool. I love how vibrant they made him. He begins to tell Casey the story of the morphers that he's looking at, that they belonged to the original Rangers of Dimension X. Makes sense. They probably had X's on their chest, how Casey does. Krang says that sadly, he was forced to destroy them when they dared to rise up against the Utrams, but that he's come to learn a lot of their secrets, and that Casey's morpher is the last one that works from the Dimension X Rangers. Then Krang begins to ask Casey why he suddenly betrayed his friends. Casey tells him that playing hero only gets you so far and that it was time to pick a side and that he aims to win. Krang tells him to prove it, that if he's really dedicated to conquering and enslaving mankind, that he'll need to kneel. The two stare at each other for a second, then Casey ends up kneeling. Krang smiles and we hear Rita come in and tell Krang that Casey can be trusted and sends Casey off. You hear Krang and Rita discuss Rita's enchantment over Casey as he walks away and Krang tells her she's playing with fire. Rita disregards this and asks Krang if he's located the Shredder yet. Krang tells her, not yet, but that he won't elude them forever. Back at the Turtle Den, everyone is doing their own thing. Splinter and Zordon are playing chess. Raph and Leo are training with some of the Rangers. Donatello is helping with modifications on the Dragon Zord, stuff like that. We hear Zordon and Splinter talk about how the Turtles and the Rangers aren't soldiers, but that they're always in the front lines of a war that may never end. Splinter says, but that it is a war that must be fought, that he and Zordon can only pass along the skills that will help them survive, but that they must decide what to do with it. Zordon says that he wishes the Turtles and Rangers could remain children for just a little while while longer. Splinter agrees, and then we cut on over to Angel Grove. Over here, Bulk and Skull are giving April a tour of the town, and we get some pretty funny dialogue here with Bulk and Skull explaining some of the stuff about the city. Then suddenly, a portal begins to open up in the sky, and we see Rita, Leatherhead, Slash, Goldar, Rocksteady, that blue bad guy that's always with Rita, some of Krang's rock soldiers, and Putties begin to come out of the portal. Bulk and Skull run away, leaving April behind. April calls in to the Turtles and the Rangers and lets them know what's happening. Immediately, Trini radios 
goes in to Alpha to teleport everybody to the scene. This is when Billy asks Zordon if he can initiate the Shadow Morphers, which he had mentioned to Donatello in the first issue, by the way. Zordon says yes, and you can see Donatello get excited, just as Jason says, it's morphin' time. Everyone yells out, power bunga, and we see that everyone morphs, so there's two of every ranger. But the doubles are the turtles, and they have that same turtle ranger design and colors from the first crossover. The turtles and rangers arrive in Angel Grove, and a fight begins. We see some good banter here with Mikey and the rangers as they fight, just as you would imagine with Mikey. But you also get some great banter here with the rest of the turtles and the rangers as well. You see everyone fighting alongside their color pair, which at first I thought was just a cool way to show how good they look together. But then you hear some dialogue between Leonardo and Billy. Leo asks Billy if the morphs are gonna hold. Billy tells him the closer they stay together, the better. So it seems that the turtles' ranger powers will go away if they leave their pair, or at least go away faster, as there does appear to be a time limit on these morphs as well, with Billy saying that he and Donatello tested it, and the longest that they were able to stay morphed was about 26 minutes. So that's an interesting dynamic here. Pretty cool, it kind of puts the pressure on the good guys. Now you see that the rangers and turtles really aren't having a hard time with the villains. The fight seems pretty easy, and that's because this is just a distraction. We cut over to the Power Ranger Command Center, and you see here that Bebop, Baxter, Scorpina, and Ranger X Casey are there, but there's a force field around the command center, preventing them from getting in. Now earlier, if you remember, Rita asked Baxter if he had completed a task, and I believe it is these devices here that he uses to take down the force field around the command center. The shield goes down, and with a rocket launcher, Bebop blasts a hole through one of the walls. Casey reminds everyone that they're there to do a job, and to not let things get personal. We quickly cut back over to the fight with the Turtles, Rangers, and the other villains back at Angel Grove. They get a mayday from Alpha about everything that's going on at the command center. Then it jumps back to Casey and the villains in the command center. Baxter says that his readings say that they're getting close to what they're there for, when suddenly, Raphael, Tommy, and Jason show up. Now, a second fight here at the command center ensues. Tommy versus Bebop, Jason versus Scorpina, and yes, Casey versus Raphael. And this fight's really good. The two begin to talk at first, and Raph says he'll give Casey one chance because he's brainwashed, but that if he doesn't drop the hockey stick, that he'll drop him. Casey and him begin to fight. Raph tells him that they're messing with Casey's head, and he calls him brother. Casey tells Raph that he's not his brother, that Raphael now has his new ranger buddies, and that anyway, he could never be brothers with a freak like Raph. And he proceeds to smash Raphael's helmet with his hockey stick weapon. Raph, with a broken face mask, looks up at him in fear, and you can see that Casey raises his weapon up again, but just as Casey swings down, Raph times it perfectly and blocks it with his rangerfied size, shattering Casey's hockey stick. Casey's helmet goes away, and we see his face. He looks at Raph and tells him, sorry to disappoint, but that he's not brainwashed, that it's all him. Raphael asks, but why? Casey tells him, it's crazy, but that it'll all make sense eventually, and to trust him. So yeah, super interesting. Looks like Casey is working covertly, but to what ends? We'll find out soon, I guess. I wonder how he's blocking Rita's enchantment. Anyways, we cut back over to the fight in Angel Grove with the rest of the team, and they're doing pretty good, just like before, but just the pure number of putties that are now being thrown at them are slowing them down. Alpha radios in to Billy that they need more help at the command center, and it jumps back to the command center, and Rocksteady and Scorpina are dead set on destroying Zordon, and they're getting closer. Jason and Tommy try to hold them off, but are getting overwhelmed. It starts getting really bad to the point where Zordon tells Alpha to run, and to tell the other rangers that he will always, and this is when Alpha cuts him off saying no, that they'll have to go through him first. Alpha stands his ground as Bebop approaches with a rocket launcher, and just as he's about to shoot, ninja stars come flying in and hit the barrel of the blaster, breaking it. And you hear someone say, I can't allow that, Bebop. In fact, I'm afraid I can't allow this invasion to continue at all. And we see it's the Shredder, and he looks great. But unfortunately, that's where this book ended. All right, everyone, super cool issue in my opinion. I'm liking this crossover so far. So far, I think this is a strong follow-up. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. What's Casey up to? What's Shredder doing? The two seem to be helping out their enemy, but to what ends? We'll see. But that's it for this breakdown of issue two of the Ninja Turtles Power Rangers, the crossover sequel. Thanks everyone for watching. Remember to hit subscribe if you're new. All we do on here is cover old, new, and upcoming turtle stuff. Follow on all the socials. Links are down below in the description, and I will see you guys in a little bit with another video. Take care. Armed 